This episode of Big Cat Rescue is brought to you by Audible. Go to audiblepodcast.com forward slash Big Cat TV to get a free audiobook download of your choice when you sign up today. Sometimes when you're walking around Big Cat Rescue, you forget that these animals all have a story to tell, just like you and I. Some are retired performing animals. Many have been rescued from private owners, who for one reason or another are unable to keep them any longer. Whether it's due to financial problems, health issues, police confiscations such as Nikita who was found chained to the wall in a drug house, or they simply abandon the cats once they become too much of a nuisance. We've even rescued cats from other sanctuaries. Andre, Arthur, and Amanda came from the Wild Animal Orphanage in Texas after it went bankrupt in 2011. Riza and Jojo were rescued from a sanctuary in 2013. At one point, the South Florida Wildlife Rehabilitation Center was home to over a dozen big cats, including tigers, leopards, cougars, and a lion. Our founder visited the facility back in 2005, after a hurricane had taken down the perimeter fencing and dumped piles of deadfall on the cages. The owner was in way over his head. Donations were almost non-existent. The cages were old, dilapidated, small, and concrete floored. The freezer had also been damaged and the owner had lost his food supply. So we sent food and volunteers to help him clean up and rebuild. Although the owner and the volunteers were doing their best, they tried to educate the few visitors they had each year and were providing a home for cats that may not have survived otherwise. The conditions were still bad. As in many cases, when we learn about cats in need of a home or cubs from petting schemes that are now retired, and living the good life at a so-called sanctuary, they end up in places like this, but usually much worse. Or they just disappear. There's no requirement when people trade animals to list their date of birth, medical history, chain of ownership, or anything. They can be sold into the canned hunting industry where they're shot in confined areas and made into a trophy or simply killed for their body parts. There's just not enough money or manpower to regulate these exotic animals. Riza had been at the sanctuary in South Florida for 15 years and she's believed to be around 18 to 19 years of age. Riza is German for journey and it's certainly an appropriate name. Riza was born into the pet trade in 1995 in Texas. She was then shipped to New York where she was kept in a small apartment by a drug dealer. She was fed domestic cat food and was extremely undernourished and had worms when she was seized and taken to South Florida. Her illegal owner was fined only $500, which just goes to show how under-enforced big cat regulations can be. Riza had been badly declawed as a kitten by her original breeder. So once in South Florida, she began a long recovery after suffering years of abuse and had to have surgery to fix a lame front paw. Jojo came from a breeder who intentionally crossbred two species, a serval and a caracal, creating a hybrid with health problems. Sometimes breeders hybridize exotic cats because there are no laws on the books that regulate them. For instance, if someone owns a liger, they can say that the laws only apply to a tiger or lion. So nothing can be done if the owner is violating any laws. Plus, the public will always pay to see something different and strange. Unfortunately, on the day of the rescue, volunteers couldn't entice Riza into the transport cage with food. So we had to sedate her. While she was sedated, we took the opportunity to do a physical exam, weighed her, drew blood, and checked her teeth and claws. Then, once the sedation had been reversed and she was awake, we quickly loaded her into the BCR trailer with air conditioning. Jojo was kept in a smaller cage and we decided to enter the enclosure, net him, then transfer him into a carrier. Sedation is always a last resort since animals can react badly to the drugs and Jojo could have fallen from his perch. Once Riza and Jojo were loaded up, we hit the road and arrived back at the sanctuary in the early evening. Volunteers and interns were eagerly waiting to welcome our two newest residents and to help transport them to their final home. 
This could quite possibly be the first time Riza and Jojo have walked on soft dirt or had trees, plants, and grass to enjoy. Since their rescue, both of them have settled in very well at the sanctuary. Riza's a very chatty girl, loves playing with her boomer ball, and really enjoys our frozen blood sickles on hot days. Jojo loves taking naps on the soft dirt surrounded by the tall grass, enjoys our spice bag enrichment, and also likes to patrol his larger territory and keep pesky cameramen at bay. And both cats definitely enjoy feeding time. Having only been fed a diet of chicken necks previously, the varied and balanced diet at Big Cat Rescue is very popular. It's great to once again be able to rescue these cats from poor conditions, and then give them the best possible in captivity for the next chapter of their lives, thanks to our supporters.